Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. A volcanic eruption in the Canary Islands has increased in size with 12 metre high lava cascading down upon a village, forcing locals to flee before their homes were engulfed. For a fifth day, lava flowing down the slopes of the volcano has destroyed houses and schools. Authorities have warned of new dangers including toxic gases, volcanic ash and acidic rain. Around 7,000 people living on the island have been forced to leave their homes to escape the eruption so far, though there have been no reports of any fatalities. Unless urgent action is taken, Afghanistan... The World Health Organization has appealed to the international community for donors to continue funding its campaign in Afghanistan as the country faces imminent humanitarian catastrophe. Significant health gains have been made in Afghanistan. The World Health Organization Director General said that cases of infant disease polio, which was close to being eradicated in the country, could make a reappearance in the country. Poverty and hunger are spiraling since the Taliban took power in the country, and foreign aid has dried up amid Western distrust of the Islamist militants. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison has said he has tried to arrange a conversation with French President Emmanuel Macron, but has been unsuccessful so far. The two countries are at odds after Australia cancelled a major submarine deal with Paris. I look forward to when the time is right and when the opportunity presents. That Mr Morrison said he would be patient in rebuilding ties with France after a phone call with US President Joe Biden to smooth relations. Facebook has been ordered by a U.S. judge to release records of accounts connected to anti-Rohingya violence in Myanmar. The ruling criticized Facebook for failing to hand over information to investigators seeking to prosecute the country for international crimes against the Muslim minority group. Facebook has previously refused to release data, saying it would violate a U.S. law, barring it from disclosing users' communications. The Biden administration is preparing to reopen a migrant detention camp on Guantanamo Bay in the wake of a surge of migrants and asylum seekers on the southern border. The Immigration and Customs Enforcement Bureau is inviting tenders for private contractors to run the Migrant Operations Center at the U.S. Naval Base. It's after authorities in the Texas town of Del Rio declared a local state of emergency after around 12,000 migrants, most from Haiti, gathered around a bridge on the border with Mexico. A multinational military force in Mozambique has rescued 87 women and children from a jihadist militant base in Macomia in the conflict-hit northern province of Cabo Delgado. They rescued 60 women and 27 children and killed five militants who had been guarding the base, that's according to military sources. Shares in Evergrande have jumped in Hong Kong after the troubled property giant struck an agreement with Chinese bondholders. The announcement helped to calm some investor concerns over debts of more than $300 billion. The Hong Kong market was closed on Wednesday when the deal was announced. After a volatile day of trading, Evergrande shares closed more than 70% higher. A new proposed rule from the European Commission will force manufacturers to create a universal charging solution for phones and small electronic devices. The aim is to reduce waste by encouraging consumers to reuse existing chargers when buying a new device. All smartphones sold in the EU must have USB-C chargers, that's according to the proposal. Apple has warned such a move would harm innovation, as the company is the main manufacturer of smartphones using a custom charging point. And finally, these spectacular images come from Puglia in Italy, where Rhiannon Ifland and Gary Hunt both successfully defended their cliff diving World Series titles. Each of the divers secured their titles at the penultimate competition on a day condensed to three rounds as opposed to four because of deteriorating weather conditions. <laughs> And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.